All right, what's up? Um, it's been a while since I made a video about this thing, I think. Um, <clears throat> the only thing I did, really, uh, this technically finishes the project, I guess, besides some painting, obviously. Um, I did paint the frame, but there's some things that I added to it after I painted it. And this needs, I need, like, some real, uh, foot pegs or something there, some grip. Um, this has grip. This has a lot of grip. The, uh, the mesh. And it's nice and tight, too. Like, you can stand on it. But, um, anyway. Uh, so, yeah. This pedal, you can see what it does. It pulls the shifter uh, forward. And then, obviously, we have this shifter. I don't know if you if you've seen past videos. This shifter is uh, your side to side movement of the shifter because it's an H pattern. There's second, third in the back, and then first reverse in the front, which I don't have reverse, so it's just first in the front. So up is second, down is third, and then to get into uh, first gear, you have to push this guy down. Right? Yeah, push that guy down first. And then, and that's first. So, yeah. You see, we're in first gear now. And now, uh, from first gear, you run, you max out your first gear, and then you pop up to that second. And then, second to third is just straight down. So, yeah. The only time you need that left shifter is for first gear. And, uh, yeah, yeah we're, it's really comfortable to ride, actually. So I made this one, like, more uh, out of the way. And it kind of can bend out of the way if something, I don't know, for whatever reason. I just, like, I just wanted to have as little in the way as possible. Because you got this big guy on this side, which you kind of need it. It could be a little bit uh, smaller, maybe cut it down to, like, there. Or something eventually but like a rubber thing like a dirt bike would have but, and then maybe a rubber cap on this one too make sure I round everything off I need to round off that bumper too it's just a smart idea to uh, not have any sharp edges <laughs> I mean it's it's really I can't cut myself on it at all but I should have something capping it and making it nice and smooth. Uh, what else? Um, there's a new piece of chain on the back, so I don't have to have my tensioner on there anymore. Which I'm not even sure if I made a video of the tensioner or not. So you can see the mount for it right there. I use a half inch bolt. And then uh, it can slide. Back and forth in that slot and in the back in the back slot oh. this air this air intake system is uh working awesome i should have a box or something up front but it really doesn't pick up too much mud it's just in the right spot where mud flies everywhere but right here some lands on the gas tank but not on the filter but, um, what else? I still have my bump steer issue. I still haven't fixed that. And that's just uh, a geometry issue. I have, like, you can see that the distance between here and here is uh, greater than the distance between here and the center of the axle. And actually, what really matters is this here. So, I think the point where the steering pivots needs to be equal in distance, like, here. Because like, ideally, this would be right on the pivot. In this type of design, this guy should be on the pivot down here. If not, you need a you need it parallel to this line.
if that makes any sense. So yeah, it's a slight bump steer issue. Um, pretty much, you can see there's a slight toe out there, and when you're riding, it's a little bit like it's a little bit less towed out. It's pretty much straight. I have that toe out there to compensate for it. So like when you if you hit a bump hard, this guy is gonna straighten out. It's not gonna, which could send you that way, but it's better than the wheels on toe in. Um, I ride the back. I ride standing up. If I'm riding it hard, I'm standing up, and I ride the back wheels pretty much. Um, you can ride the suspension over some stuff, but you know, eventually, eventually that'll uh, fix that issue. And that suspension to soak up bumps without uh, being a big deal. Because right now, if you if you let the suspension do the work over like some whoops or something, like some repetitive bumps, you start to get a weird situation. But that's um, that's all I got done. Really, uh, I have the twelve tooth sprocket back on here. I don't even know if I made a video. Oh, I don't think I did. So I I have a ten tooth sprocket as well. It's that twelve. Uh, I don't know where it is, but this is the uh, this is the adapter I made to because the tw the ten tooth sprocket is for a three quarter shaft. So I made this little adapter, and then used some three three sixteenths plate, and then just made a little bit taller keyway three sixteenths wide by quarter inch tall keyway. And it worked perfectly. Yeah. I can't, oh, here's the bastard. That sprocket. Yeah, that worked perfectly. So I can have a 10 tooth or a 12 tooth on the input of the tranny. I have. Um, what I really want to do is put um, probably the 12 tooth here eventually. Get another 5 8 shaft. And then replace this stock shaft because this steps down to half inch here. So I want to put a bigger sprocket here, probably 12, and then have like as big of a sprocket as I can get here. Get the same gear ratio without spinning the tranny so fast. Because right now, you know, well, obviously with this one, it's one to one. The transmission spins just as fast as the motor on the input, which it loves it. It doesn't. It doesn't seem to have any problem with it. I do have motor oil in there to keep up with it, but it does it does weep out a little bit. You can see it definitely weeps out. But keeps the chains looped. Definitely keeps the chains looped. And does not get on the brake. The brake works perfectly. So that's all you can really ask for. Uh, I can obviously check my oil through that hole in the top there and add oil if I need to. It's not as big as it looks. It's a washer on top of a this is clamped to a washer. It's, it's not a, it's not a it's big washer. <laughs> um, yeah. That's all I got, I think. This, oh, this handle here, eventually, I want to use for, I think I've talked about this, um, a clutch brake, because the only issue with this design is when you're, in neutral at a rest when you stopped and you want to get into gear this guy put it in neutral here. this guy spins real easy because you just spin in this shaft the gears inside the tranny are staying still so you just spin in this shaft so that's why you need more oil to make this guy spin inside of those gears and, then, and uh yeah and there's only there are only bronze bushings here I I like I like the oil weeping out because it fucking you know that the bushings are getting looped and not dusted from the outside, which is key. <laughs> it keeps my brake shaft lubricated nicely. That little spring there and the bushing that it slides in. The front isn't so well lubed. It should have oil leaking everywhere. <laughs> Alright, that's uh gonna do that's all I got today. Um yeah.
otherwise can't complain about anything about it. It's really fast, like fast as hell. For it's like the quickest thing that I've ever seen on a like a two twelve Predator powering. I've never seen anything like it. Like a, a torque converter, that torque converter has no chance, no chance against it at all. It's just not even close. Because that torque converter sucks up like 30% of your power just to operate it and all the slip it's got. So this guy has all the benefits of that. Like when it's in its range, it's in its, it's got the most power. Like it's just direct drive. It's got all the benefits with three separate ratios. And like it's direct chain to chain. No, no belts to slip, nothing like that. So like it's literally as little power loss as you can have in a system like this with with three gears it's i don't think you can get it any simpler and uh obviously if i had a mechanical clutch i could get even better takeoff here because i'm limited to what that clutch can do i got a better clutch lock up sooner and make even more power on the ground because that's the key with something like this torque converters are an easy way to get a good Good takeoff from the start and then a good compromise for top speed. But this is no compromise. That's what's great about it. You could drive it in second the whole time, no problems. Uh, just like a go kart, just like a standard geared go kart, you know what I mean? And then you could hit third gear and you could do 40 miles an hour. Uh, I think this gearing probably will do more like 37 wound out. But the other one is like 48 miles an hour. I did the math, and that's like spinning the motor 4,500 RPM, no more, no more than that. But yeah, it really does, really does do well. The gears are nicely spaced and stuff. I can't, uh, can't complain about it at all. So, thanks for watching. If you do, and hopefully I'll have more projects coming soon.